it is Friday, February 17th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday puzzle today, so a themeless puzzle. I won't have any, <laughs> won't have any uh, grid art related theme absolutely staring me in the face like I did yesterday. At least probably not. Um, very unlikely. And this uh, very likely unthemed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Joe Percy, Joseph Schwalbach, Overfull Hitbox, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for their generous support in sustaining this channel. I do very much appreciate that. It keeps this whole thing going. And thank you to all of my patrons, regardless of of level. You can become one by going to patreon.com slash daily solve or by following a link in the description field underneath the video. As a benefactor, you'll get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug. And as any patron, you will get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. Um, benefactors, of course, also get that credit at the beginning of the video. Um, and those new videos include the uh, my most recent acrostic solve. So uh, check that out if you're interested in acrostics that went up uh, yesterday, I believe. It was yesterday, the day before. In any case, it's up there now, and you can watch it if you're a patron. Um, do also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not yet done so. And you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server in another link in the description field underneath the video. And that is a nice, friendly chat community. So thanks to everybody who's subscribed, who's joined the Discord, or is a patron. And thanks to you for watching. Uh, there. So now let's get on to the puzzle itself. This is a Friday unthemed crossword, as, as noted, by Jem Birch, who's constructed just a small handful of puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Um, I can see we're back to symmetry, and there's another little L in, in the puzzle. I assume we're not going to be taking the L and following it to connect two parts of an answer, but but we'll, we'll just have to watch out just in case. A room warmer of sorts. Does radiator work? No, it doesn't. Um, that would have been my first guess. Well, what do, you, what do I mean, what of? It was, <laughs> it was my first guess. And I even tried typing it into the grid. To react to surprise. Oh, react to in surprise. So it could be something at, like gasp at. Um, drill switches. I'm just, this is a bit of a random stab, so I'm trying to see if the crosses help. Place subject to food stains. A shirt collar, a shirt front? Is that a phrase, a shirt front? I'm just trying to think where would, where would food stains be most likely to occur? Kind of code, penal code or um, prison code or, I don't know. There you are. That could be it. Maybe, maybe, maybe Gaspet is right. First letter of czar in Russian. There must be, yeah, I mean, I don't, I visited Moscow once and I got enough practice sort of reading the Cyrillic alphabet that I was able to kind of read it phonetically just because it's, it's obviously what everything's printed in, but I didn't. I certainly didn't know the names of the letters of that alphabet. So I assume that's what this asking is asking for, and I just do not know the answer. All right, if you can't tolerate something, you abhor it. Evidently is... Um, oh, sorry, it's evidently in quotation marks. So it's something you'd say. It's not a word that means evidently. So I see is something you could say in place of saying evidently. Someone explains something to you and you say, oh, evidently. So I see. Okay, so T. That's really not what I was expecting this to be. Oh, it's not. Sorry, this isn't. Why did I put, why did I put that there? Abhors. Can't tolerate. She can't tolerate it. She abhors it. Also, even if it were singular, abhor doesn't have an E there, so I'm not sure what that was about. So, good. I'm glad I, I'm glad I double-checked that because it would have made no sense if it were T because then we wouldn't have need, needed the N Russian bit and it wouldn't have been as straightforward as first letter of. There would have been something punnier. So in any case, this must be, that makes sense that this would be C with T-S-E. Um, 
given the way that the words are, actually begins in its, I don't know, Romanized form, I guess. So I suspect that's right. Kind of code. Okay, so not not penal or prison. Well, obviously it wasn't going to be penal. A postal code for a mailing address. And if you're miffed, uh, you're sore. Maybe this isn't postal code. Um, hurt. Oh, it could be. It could be still. Just trying to think of how this could all work together. So let's, let's put that back in and see, keep going. First name in R and B. Etta, like Etta James. Drill switches. Oh, about faces. In a military drill, you switch direction. About face. Okay. And gas heaters are... Oh, no, singular, sorry. Singular gas heater is a room warmer of sort. There we go. Okay. All right, that all worked out, actually. On we plus wealth is affluenza. I remember this was in the news... I don't remember what the context was exactly, but this was a sort of phrase that was used to describe, I guess, in a in a to put it in a pithy manner, sort of rich people problems. It was sort of a dissatisfaction that accompanied vast wealth or something like that. Or maybe it was maybe it wasn't that. But but in any case, that's what this answer is going for. Obviously a, a um portmanteau of affluent, so wealthy, and influenza, the illness. All right, evil conglomerate on Mr. Robot. I have not actually seen Mr. Robot. If I saw these three letters in a five-letter space in the grid ordinarily, I would just assume, oh, it's E. coli, but um, no, or econo, you know, sort of prefix suggesting economizing. Uh, Could be Ecole, French school, um, but I do not know the answer in this case. Con- contractors project informally, a, a reno, a renovation, so a general contractor, a building contractor. Animal form of Harry Potter's pat- Patronus. Um, I'm not really sure what that's about, but an animal, a stag is an animal. So that seems reasonable. Let's check the crosses. Jet engines do it. Jet engines roar. And does well enough is gets by. Okay, there we go. That all worked out. So maybe this is E Corp? Like the E Corporation? The Evil Corporation? (laughs) I assume that's not what they're named for, but it seems like it based on the clue. To judge at home is to ump, to umpire. So to be a judge in a baseball game, essentially, at the home plate. Okay, savages. So this is savages um, as a verb, I think, because it could be malls. He... You know, he savaged the other guy. He mauled the other guy. What Moana means in Hawaiian? Um, C. I think I learned that at, at one point. I wouldn't have remembered it off the top of my head, but with the with the clues, it, it seems pretty clear. Was or with the the crosses was very exciting informally. It, see, hmm. informally. I'm I'm not sure offhand. Chopin piece inspired by a dog chasing its tail. Um, Minute Waltz? That's a Chopin piece, isn't it? Just, I'm just, (laughs) I don't know, I don't know the thing about the dog chasing its tail. I don't think it's just that it would fit with the N-U and I'm pretty sure that's a Chopin piece. Um, and those are there's some distinctive letters in there, so let's check them and see if it works. The farming industry. Oh, right, something biz, Ag- agribiz, agricultural business. The farming industry informally. Fictional figure who visits the night cloaked deck. Night cloaked deck. Is it Ahab from Moby Dick? I'm just thinking that because a deck of a ship. I assume this means, and Ahab was a. Uh, kind of had sort of a, you know, he had a vile temper. He was a, a kind of embittered, angry man. So you could imagine him visiting the night cloaked deck in an evocative way. Vikings, he was the one who hunted the great white whale, obviously. Vikings swig of ale? 
Is that particularly associated with Vikings? I guess so. Company with a Brickopedia online reference. That must be Lego. There must be a sort of Wikipedia equivalent for Lego called Brickopedia. Referring to Lego bricks. And wrapper blank sweatshirt. Oh, I think I learned this in the crossword. Earl sweatshirt. I recognize now. And equipment for gamers could be headsets for chatting with other teammates or what have you. Pivotal figure in the English Reformation and Boleyn, I suppose, um, played a sort of indirect role, I suppose, in the English Reformation because uh, Henry VIII um, wanted to divorce her, which was disallowed by the Pope. It wasn't really why the English Reformation happened, which is some sometimes how people characterize it, whereas there was actually an entire movement around it, but certainly tied up in all that. Okay, to roll it, roll it, a die, you could roll a die um, in a game. And form of nonviolent protest could be a lie-in. Um, big thing in... So that was um, li lions. Did, did John Lennon and one of the official musicians of the New York Times crossword, Yoko Ono, I think, th I think they did lions... Um, in any case, pieces in the game Rummy Cub. I don't think I know Rummy Cub, but they must be tiles, which are certainly game pieces. And if something's nice and easy, it's relaxed. Oh, I read. Yeah, that works. This looks a little bit odd, though, doesn't it? Confounding contraptions. Oh, puzzle boxes. Okay, good. That ended up being very helpful, that, that ZL. Uh, was successful at the carnival booth, say. Won a toy or won a prize, maybe. Um, if you win a game at a carnival booth, sometimes you get a, I don't know, stuffed animal or whatever sort of prize. Whom the Irish may call a gassoon. A lad? I'm not certain about this, but it would fit the crosses. Its index case occurred in Meliandu, Guinea. Okay, well, index case, so it must be uh, an illness, so Ebola or virus. Okay, so what some pies may be baked on. Stones? Oh, pizza, pizza stones. Pizza pies. And is there anything in... Oh, we didn't see this. Lion dance holiday. So Tet, okay. So the Tet holiday. There we go. Um, celebrated in some Asian countries. And was very exciting informally. It sizzled, I guess. Boy, I would not have gotten there without some crossing help, I don't think. Something you might hear while you're on hold. Muzak, famously the uh, instrumental um, instrumental kind of non-offensive music that's, that's used in corporate settings. Infamously, as small as two cups. As small as two cups. A pint of something? Is a pint two cups? I, you know, I never actually really internalized all of this sort of weird imperial measurements, cups and pints and quarts and everything. They're, it's just such an arbitrary measurement. Um, or such an arbitrary system. As small as two cups. I mean, a pint is pretty small. Maybe that it probably is two cups. So pint something. I'm just Putting that in, and I'll check the crosses, and we'll see. Kind, kind of code. Oh, penal code, right. So right. So we had kind of code up here, and then penal code down here, and that was one of my guesses for the above. So Or not not actually a guess, because it wouldn't have fit, but one of just along the way of formulating a guess, it came to mind. Some Hanukkah servings are latkes. I thought that's what this was going to be, based on that TK, cro uh, those crosses there. Flora could be plants, so latkes, potato pancakes. Okay, so flora is the sort of local plant life of an area. Seasonal units for short are something with an S. Oh, pint, pint size. I see. Right. It's as small as two cups. It's a description of something. You say that thing is as small as two cups. That thing is pint size. Although pint size is used more euphemistically just to mean to refer to a person usually being small, a child or something like that. So hence the, um, hence the question mark because we don't, we're not actually using this as measurements. We're using it in a punny or idiomatic way. Okay, seasonal units for short, right? Wasn't sure about that. The third man for one could be considered a film noir. I don't 
know that I necessarily consider it a classic film noir. It is a great film. It is a classic, absolute, all-time classic. I guess I, I guess I understand why it's considered noir in this case. It is a film with a sort of dark outlook on, on humanity, I guess. Um, sort of post-war film, and it is sort of in the noir era, certainly. Anyway, great Carol Reed film with uh, incredibly notable Orson Welles appearance. Tea brand with passion and joy flavors. Te- Tezo, Tazo, Tezo, is a um, is it is a tea brand. So that must be it. And a big fight is a row. A big uh, argument. Water zooey or Callaloo? Um, stew. Callaloo, I think. I've at least seen. I don't know about water zooey. That does not look familiar to me at all. I'll have to look that up. And outerwear for an old seven down, an old tar, an old, an old uh, sea dog, uh, an old sailor, such as Ahab, wears a pea coat. Maybe Ahab himself had a pea coat as outerwear. And seasonal units for short are ACs, oh, so air conditioning units. I see. So seasonal because you'd only use them during warm weather, which tends to be during the summer months. Sucker for a fictional storyline. I do not know what that's getting at. And here we have go out for a bit, to nap, to to be out, to be asleep, just for a bit, though. Heracles killed its eponymous lion, the lion of Nemea. Um, One of Hercules' famous feats. And sucker for a fictional storyline. I'm not sure what that is. Full of flavor is, what about these? Cry of dismay could be dough or, that's more frustration, dismay, ach, or something. Native of the Dutch Caribbean, and Antillen or something? That's not right. Issa of Little. Well, Issa Ray is an actor and creator of television. I don't think I'm familiar with Little. Um, I really liked her show Insecure. Native of the Dutch Caribbean, cellist Pablo. Don't think that's familiar to me. Whistler on the Range. Not sure about that either. This could be a Reuben, maybe? Native of the Dutch Caribbean? Cry of Dismay. Ach, maybe it is that. Does that help? Oh, I just don't think I know these. Well, let's put this in and see if it helps anything else. Full of flavor. Oh, robust, maybe. It's got a robust flavor. It's full of flavor. Some extractions. Ores, you could extract ore from a, a ore deposit. And singer, songwriter, blank Rexa. That is not familiar to me at all, so I'm not sure. Real life sucker. Um... Some sort of bug. I don't think that's. I don't think that's going to be it. Low life, a sleaze ball. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's helpful. Those crosses were very helpful there. Uh, okay, so this could be Baba or BB or something. Not sure. Tracked, so to speak. Oh, not sure. Go to spot for multiple dates. Question mark. Does it mean date the fruit? Go to spot for multiple dates. Hmm. Broncos, but not Impalas in brief. And Impalas is capitalized. So there's a model of car, the Chevrolet Impala. Broncos. I think that... Is that... Oh, right. That used to be a Ford... I don't think it's around anymore, but Ford Bronco. Um, is that related or is that something completely different? Is this, are they maybe sports teams? Broncos, but not Impalas. In Bre- oh, SUVs maybe. Is the Bronco an SUV? That would make sense. And an Impala definitely isn't. An Impala is a, is a car. Okay, so sucker for a fictional storyline. A dupe? A dupe is a sucker. Why would it need to be a fictional storyline? Is that because the dupe is specifically a sort of trope of fiction or something? 
oh, I see, as in a fictional story, no, I, it means someone you would, someone to whom you would feed a fictional storyline under the guise of truth and they would fall for it, a dupe. Okay, I see. Go-to spot for multiple dates is... I do not see it for some reason. Oh, but a vampire bat is a real-life sucker. Okay, there we go. So, palm? The palm tree? A date palm? That makes sense. That's where you'd get more than one date from a palm. Okay. So, it was the fruit. Tracked, so to speak. Oh, it made sense. It tra that, that tracked. That made sense. Okay, good. A place for a frog or a mouse. A pad. Right, so a frog on a lily pad, I suppose, in a pond, and a mouse, a computer mouse, on a mouse pad. Very good, very clever. So if attracted, it made sense, and cellist Pablo... Boy, I'm just not sure about this. And Whistler on the range, a kettle? Oh, on the, yeah, on the... Um, um, Stovetop, the range, the stovetop in that sense. And it'll whistle. So, I mean, these days, I think probably most people have electric kettles, but you could still have a manual stovetop kettle that whistles when it boils. And cry of dismay, not ach, but ach. I don't know why I thought of ach first. But so this is Pe Pe uh, Pablo Casals. Um, and I'll need to look, I need to look him up. And there we go. <laughs> That was the Friday puzzle, and it was probably, it was probably on balance a more difficult puzzle than yesterday's, but I definitely didn't struggle with it nearly as much because there wasn't a theme that I was for some reason remaining obstinately oblivious to. So uh, there we have it. That was the New York Times crossword for Friday, the themeless puzzle. And some, some very nice, interesting, lots of sort of unusual letters. Look at this, minute waltz, puzzle boxes, pizza stones, Vampire bats, sleazeball, lots of Z's. Lotka's just interesting sort of letter positioning. And uh, it was helpful in getting some of these answers, even without, in some cases, without even necessarily needing to look at the clue because there were such distinctive letter connections, at least in English. So uh, that solved very, very well. I, I, in the sense that I thought it was, it, I clicked with it, I suppose, and, and um, had a nice smooth solve. So I enjoyed that one. Hope you did as well. Let me know how you fared. We know you fared versus yesterday. Probably quite a few of you did better than I did yesterday. Um, in any case, there we go. That was the Friday puzzle. And um, there were just a couple of things I wanted to read from yesterday's puzzle. So we'll take a quick glance at those. So first, Elon Eaton makes the incredibly interesting and important observation that I wish I'd seen myself, and I'm not surprised I didn't, given how late I was to observe the theme. Uh, so if you recall, yesterday's theme was based around the concept of taking the L, and what that meant was answers followed Ls that were spelled out, that were, that were written, uh, sort of illustrated in black cells, and answers were split up with the kind of by the 90 degree turn of those Ls. And also the grid art Ls served as literally letter L. And Alan Eaton points out, it's noteworthy that except for the grid art, there are no Ls in the grid. That is a great detail that I did not notice. And that kind of thing often happens with theme with themes of that sort. And I'm always very impressed when constructors pull it off. So, so well done uh, to that constructor for managing that. The only Ls in the grid were the big illustrated ones. Very well done. And Nix Hicks... Uh, summarizes the role of a residential advisor, an RA, which I think I sort of explained in a fumbling manner. So she says, a student in the dorm or hall compensated to help keep order, resolve conflict, bolster community, etc. Kind of a first line of defense or recourse before taking matters to university staff. So there we go. Good, succinct definition of an RA. And that's that for today. I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday crossword. Look forward to that. Should be another themeless puzzle, probably a bit tougher than this one. That's ten, that tends to be how it goes on Saturday. So join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.